Spectre Mites. What are they? They're the smallest hostile mob in the game, and they're one of the very few creatures to possess the moniker of Ender. But to me, the weirdest detail about them is that they don't get along with the Ender men. When confronted with each other, they just attack. It's a strange little detail to include since so many of the other spawns in the end aren't hostile towards one another. But now, consider this. What if Ender Mites are actually silverfish? The obnoxious little gray bugs that bother you up in the overworld. What if Ender Mites are just silverfish who went through an end portal? Or ate themselves a bunch of chorus fruit when they were out there in the end, or whatever. The proof here is actually surprisingly substantial. Cue up the checklist. Point number one, both Ender Mites and silverfish are small. In fact, they're both so small that they'll suffocate to death in the sinking depths of soul sand. They're the only two hostile mobs where this sort of thing happens. Speaking of their size, not only are they both small, technically speaking, they're exactly the same size. According to Minecraft Gamepedia, both creatures are 0.3 blocks tall and 0.4 blocks wide. In fact, they're so similar that an early design of the Endermites was just that of Silverfish. You can just see it right here on screen right now. The design was eventually changed during Java Edition 1.8, but for a while there, the two looked almost identical. Now, I know what you're thinking. That just means that they're recolored assets. It doesn't necessarily make them the same creature, but think again. To understand exactly why, we need to look at the enchantment Bane of Arthropods. If we're being honest, Bane of Arthropods is pretty lame as far as enchantments go. Sure, it increases your attack damage, but it only works when fighting against one of four very specific mobs in the game. And two of those mobs are spiders, so 50% are supposedly diverse creatures in this universe. And those two happen to be silverfish and endermites. Meaning that at the very least, they're in the same taxonomic phylum. AP biology, what, what? But here's the kicker. The only way to get to the end is through portals that are hidden in strongholds deep underground, right? No big surprise there. But look into how strongholds are generated and you notice something interesting. They always have to have a portal room. That makes sense, since they're the primary place that you find the portal to the end game. But the two features required of that portal room, obviously the portal, but also a silverfish spawner. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but this to me reads like the criminals returning to the scene of the crime. So why don't Endermen and Endermites get along? Well, if my last theory was correct about Endermen being an ancient race of builders, then one of their old foes would have been the silverfish. Silverfish who are in the perfect position to leap through end portals at the same time as these ancient builders. And so now, hundreds of generations, and one end portal later, that battle is still being waged. New names, new faces, but the same old enemy. This lore isn't told through dialogue and cutscenes, instead it's communicated through subtle design choices. Spawn conditions, character designs, achievement names, hostile versus friendly behavioral patterns, and all of that will be important today as we explore the secrets of the Wither. Because last time we looked at the end of the Minecraft story, today we're talking about about how it all began. So, in case you missed it, or just forgot, during my last major Minecraft theory, we tallied up the evidence suggesting that Endermen are actually an evolved form of an ancient race of builders. They speak English, they're able to hold rudimentary blocks, it would explain why strongholds are called strongholds in the first place, and why mysterious structures like underwater monuments and old mine shafts are left abandoned, dotted around the overworld when no other living creature in this universe has neither the ability to mine nor craft. The theory also explains the origins of end cities, and why they contain abandoned chests full of supplies totally inappropriate for life in that hostile purple environment. There's obviously a lot more, but you should just go watch that theory if you're interested, link is in the didgeridoo. Anyway, one key element I was speculating about in that theory was what motivated this ancient race of people to wind up in the end in the first place. They seem like they were fleeing to it, but why? Curiosity? An accident? I ultimately conclude that it was to escape something. Some big threat that existed out there in the overworld. Now, obviously, the overworld is populated with zombies and creepers and skeletons, but that just doesn't seem like enough to warrant building out a massive underground fortress deep down near the bedrock. No, after doing Doing the research, it's my belief that these ancient builders accidentally summoned the Wither, which proceeded then to decimate their established society, killing them off by the hundreds, until they somehow managed to flee to the end and escape. Now, why would I say this? Well, first and foremost, let's look at the achievement list, shall we? When we defeat the Ender Dragon, we get ourselves the end achievement. And that makes a lot of sense, right? It's the quote-unquote final boss of the game, after all. It cues the end credits. You're in a place literally called the end. And it's an achievement name that totally works. But for summoning the Wither, you actually get the exact opposite, the beginning 
the question mark. And then after its defeat, you get yourself the beginning again, but this time it's with a period. It's a definitive statement that directly parallels how the Ender Dragon achievements are handled, but with one problem. The Wither can be summoned at any time, and it very often happens after the dragon has been killed. It's not the beginning of really anything in this game. I was tempted to think that maybe it's the beginning of a new adventure post Ender Dragon, but again, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense since summoning and defeating the Wither is completely optional in the story. And if and when you do do it, nothing much comes of it, really. It gives you a nether star, which, for as special and unique as that item is, just allows you to build a beacon that shoots lame buffs into the surrounding area. It's not all that cool, or all that meaningful. But what if? What if the wither was the beginning in a different way? What if it's the beginning of the story for the ancient builders that started all this in motion in the first place? Look for a moment at the strongholds. They're buried super deep underground, like absurdly deep and with literally no trace of their existence on the surface. They're like bomb shelters or safety bunkers, but they're defending against what? Zombies? Creepers? I don't think so. You don't go to that extreme just to defend against a regular mob, but a fearsome creature like the Wither that spreads death and decay to anything in its sights? Absolutely. Especially since we know that the Wither flies and also destroys any block that it touches. Your best way to avoid a creature like this is gonna be by digging down far below where it can reasonably follow, exactly what we find with the stronghold placement. In fact, it would explain why the only remaining structures from these ancient builders on the surface of the overworld are underwater monuments, underground mine shafts, and secluded desert temples. They're the only structures that the Wither wasn't likely to touch and immediately destroy. And on that note, what's the key feature that exists inside of a stronghold? Well, it's a portal to the end. Now, we just established that the Wither can destroy almost any block that it touches. Almost any block being the operative word there. There are very few exceptions to things that it can destroy. Those exceptions include bedrock, command blocks, extended pistons, and end portal blocks and end portal frames. I don't know about you, but if my society is being decimated and I'm trapped in my underground bunker running away from this terrible beast that destroys everything it touches, I'm making sure that I'm building that last ditch escape effort using supplies that are going to be wither proof. We also can be sure that the Wither was known by the ancient builders. If you look closely at the chiseled red sandstone that was used as decorations in ancient buildings like desert temples and underwater ruins, you'll notice a hieroglyphic that clearly depicts the Wither. Straight body, three skeletal heads. So whoever created these structures in the first place certainly knew that this thing existed. But how? Or maybe more importantly, why? Why would anyone intentionally try to summon this thing in the first place? Well, let's look at how it's built, shall we? The Wither requires two very very interesting ingredients in order to be summoned. The first is soul sand found throughout the nether. Sand that's relatively unremarkable in every way. Oh yeah, except for it being composed of the souls of the damned. It's well known at this point that if you look at the pattern on soul sand close enough, you'll notice screaming faces staring right back at you. It's also why you get sucked down a bit when you're walking across it, almost like the lost souls are pulling you down into them, violently getting you to join them. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is me talking about Minecraft. Kid-friendly, brand approved. So ingredient number one, four cubic meters of damned souls. Check mark there. Secondly, you need three withered skeleton heads. But why these particular heads and not just any skeleton head? Well, to understand that, we need to find out what makes the wither skeleton so different from its brethren. You see, wither skeletons are exclusive to nether fortresses. This is worth noting because think about how crazy this is. We're basically in Minecraft's equivalent of HE double toothpicks, a world of ghasts and blazes, where everything is set on fire and nothing can build. Heck, most of the enemy spawns here don't even have arms, and yet somehow there are fortresses here that are being supervised by large cursed skeletons. Fortresses, mind you, that contain chests full of gold and diamonds and iron, saddles and horse armor, all materials that aren't found down in the nether naturally, supplies that had to have been brought down there and left by the original people who constructed these things in the first place. The end city chests function much the same way, and would you know it, they also contain the same sorts of loot iron and gold and diamonds and horse armor and saddles. Almost like it's the same people carrying their major supplies from place to place. So using this information, let me tell you a little story. An ancient race of builders descends into the nether to harvest its resources. They construct fortresses down there to defend against the hostile environment and store their supplies. But over time, as is natural, some of their ranks die.
die. The Nether is a dangerous and violent environment after all. So they bury their dead in the ground, but they don't realize that this place works differently than the overworld they're used to. What little soft ground there is actually sucks the soul out of the dead bodies, giving rise to soul sand, and leaving these bodies as just an undead husk of what they once were. It produces a wither skeleton. An aggressive, charred group of bones that, as an undead, lives on to complete the purpose it was given when it was alive. Defend its fortress. Seeing all this, the Ancient Ones start to piece together an idea. If soul sand does indeed contain lost souls and somehow gives rise to the skeletons of the dead, maybe there's a way to combine the two and bring their dead friends back to life. These builders were a proud people. I mean, they were builders, after all. Whatever they dreamed came into being from their very hands. They had conquered the Earth, they had conquered the realms of heck. Now they would conquer the one thing impossible to any man, death. They would build life itself. I mean, with the raw materials, you can construct anything. Why not a lost human? You have the soul in the sand, you have the body in the wither skeleton, why wouldn't it work? The last thing I'll call out here, you'll notice that none of the items in nether chests are enchanted, but by the time you get to the end, a lot of them are. The reason I call this out is that it shows an escalation in the way these ancient builders started using magic. By the time they end their journey in the end, they're full-blown magic users. They've started to go beyond just construction. They're starting to play with mystical forces. So, how does the story all work out? Well, it's a classic tale of hubris. The builders, having been to the fiery depths of heck, try to harness the ultimate resource, the power of life and death itself. They combine the soul and the body, the soul sand and the wither skeleton head, and it doesn't work. But by this point, they're obsessed. There has to be a way to make it work. Like so many other fictional characters before them, like Dr. Frankenstein, like the Elrics, they're convinced that they have the right ingredients, and so they start going down darker, more supernatural paths in their quest to crack the mystery. Magic, enchantment, potions. Maybe they go to the witches, already outcasts from society for their use of soul sand to concoct awkward potions and strange brews. And that's when they stumble upon it. They finally manage managed to create something, but it wasn't what they expected. Instead of bringing new life to a dead friend, they create a hideous and destructive beast. One out to punish them for tampering with the laws of nature itself. They make the Wither an unstoppable force. A beast that, as we know, destroys the blocks that it touches and curses anything that gets in its way with decay. Gone, overnight, are the great buildings that this ancient race once constructed. The only things that remain standing are temples far out into the deserts, mine shafts hidden deep underground, Monuments under the water. Gone are all the people of this once great society, one by one consumed by the wither, a disease literally eating them away from the inside. Friends, neighbors, dead, decayed, or worse, brought back to life in the form of skeletons and zombies, the living undead that roam the landscape to this day. So for their own protection, the remaining ancient people hide underground, deep underground down near the bedrock in fortified bases called strongholds, far below where the Flying Wither will be able to reach, with no trace of their existence on the surface. And it's there that they plan their escape. They've hopped to different realms before using portal technology. Why not again? But this time, the portal has to be made to be Wither-proof, which is why end portal blocks are literally the only block type outside of bedrock immune to the Wither's attacks. And from there, we know the rest. They manage to make the portal and hop to the end, but it's a one-way trip. They don't realize that the portal won't be accessible behind them. And what awaits them on the other side is something else. Something completely unexpected. Something that may have even been worse. The Ender Dragon. But hey, that's...